हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई होप यू आर हैविंग अ ग्रेट टाइम वेलकम बैक टू द डेली न्यूज एनालिसिस टुडे विल बी अंडरस्टैंडिंग द इम्पॉर्टेंट न्यूज आर्टिकल्स ऑफ सेवेंथ ऑफ मार्च 2022. ट्वेंटी टू लेट एस बिगन विद द इम्पॉर्टेंट न्यूज आर्टिकल्स ऑन द वेरी फर्स्ट पेज ऑफ द हिंदू देर वॉज अ न्यूज दैट मोर देन फिफ्टीन थाउजेंड इंडियन स्टूडेंट्स वर बीन टेकन बैक बाय द इंडियन गवर्नमेंट फ्रॉम वॉर टॉन यूक्रेन एंड द नेम ऑफ द ऑपरेशन दैट द इंडियन गवर्नमेंट हैज स्टार्टेड टू इवैक्यूएट इंडियन नेशनल्स इज ऑपरेशन गंगा दिस वी हैव डिस्कस्ड इट मैनी अ टाइम्स इन द क्लासेज ऑल्सो ऑपरेशन गंगा राइट सो देर इज अ वेरी हाई प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ इट बींग आज इन द एग्जामिनेशन सो सो रशिया हैज यू नो गिवेन अ ह्यूमिटेरियन कॉरिडोर टू द इंडियन नेशनल्स वेयर एंड टू मैनी अदर फॉरन नेशनल्स not only india and they are fleeing towards poland romania hungary slovakia slovakia so all the neighboring countries right at the same time there were also news that the ukrainian na- nationals do not want that the uh, foreign uh, you know citizens or foreign nationals should leave their country and there were uh, news apparently that they are indian uh, students and the indian nationals were being beaten up they were being harassed by the ukrainian nationals as they were leaving the country right so in this war torn country indian government started operation ganga to evacuate uh, you know indian nationals from ukraine as we all know that uh, two important cities kharkiv and sumy where indian nationals are there and in st- indian students do study mbbs in kharkiv which is the largest city of ukraine and you would be knowing that russia is already has claimed kharkiv right so kharkiv has seen heavy shelling by the russian forces i hope it is clear moving to the next news guys as we always say that we don't limit ourselves to the hindu newspaper but we also cover important news articles from indian express so on explained page there was an article with regard to nato that why did nato accept former warsaw pact states into alliance right now this while understanding this uh, article we would be understanding the root cause behind the ukrainian crisis or the root cause behind the russian invasion of ukraine now before i jump into that let us understand a bit about uh, nato guys uh, we all know that uh, you know um, post the end of second world war in the year 1945 with the bombing atomic bombing of hiroshima and nagasaki the two the world became bipolar right and uh, it was a conflict of i mean economic principles it was a economic uh, ideological conflict right where one block called as ussr or the soviet union was you know uh, uh, ex- was adopting or did adopted uh, the communist principle of economy whereas america adopted the capitalist principle of economy right in communist principle the resources of the state are equally distributed among all the people and they are being controlled by the state right so there is equitable distribution of the resources among all the people and they are controlled by the state right so they they talk about the command economies the commanding heights of the economy are being controlled by the government or are controlled by the state so that is called as communist model right so there is very little space or uh, uh, at all given to the private sector uh, and even to that extent uh, definitely when i talk about the communism i talk in its pure sense or marxism right uh, but when it went into the extreme level especially during uh, lenin and stalin's era it became very extreme and uh, to such an extent that the civil liberties of the people were being taken on right were being were being violated by the state right so that means the state were was controlling resources in such a way that at the at the cost of the civil liberties right civil liberties are the fundamental rights the 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 protection to of the rights given to the citizens right so the civil liberties were being violated by the state and uh, there was no scope given for the private sector and everything was being controlled by the state correct so it was not a market economy so this model was being adopted by the soviet that is the ussr and even china 
well india also adopted the model of uh, uh, i mean i would not say the communist model but what we had was democratic socialism where definitely the commanding heights of the economy were being would be controlled by the state but the scope and the space would be given to the private players to prosper prosper or private sector to prosper right so it was a blend of a market as well as the state economy that means it was a mixed economy model and uh, you know uh, with the civil liberties of the people being protected right so in this sense indian democratic socialism model was different from the communism practiced in the soviet number 1 now when i compare the communist model with the capitalist model guys america was a leader of or the champion of was a champion of the capitalist uh, uh, form of economy where you know where 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 it works the model works for profit right that means that means this the uh, i mean you the state would in, uh, would actually uh, invest only in those sectors where it sees profit so it was a capitalist model uh, and there was no equitable distribution of resources right so the whole conflict was an ideological conflict capitalism versus communism right so capitalism block was being headed by america and communist block was being headed by the soviet right so this was the scene after the second world war when the world was bipolar right bipolar correct one pole was the soviet and the another another pole was america right now it started there is there started a cold war right a ideological war where both the blocks started you know proving their uh, their strength over the other right and many countries year by year started joining uh, the capitalist block and the the communist block right although there were some countries which actually actually you know distanced themselves from either of the blocks and this group was called as nam non aligned movement of which india was one of the founding members including egypt yugoslavia indonesia right so so this was called as nam correct so we have discussed about the uh, the capitalist block the communist block and the nam right now as i said that uh, the uh, you know the the uh, uh, i would say the the cold war accelerated and uh, the blocks were in or were you know developing in order to prove their worth over the other right so they were building uh, they were going into space they were building their defense infrastructure and what not right and they also started a military alliance the military alliance for the capitalist bloc was called as nato north atlantic treaty organization right also called as north atlantic alliance right now it came in the year 1949 correct now nato stands for as you all know mutual defense it is a military alliance and mutual defense means those member those countries who are the member of nato you know if any alien country attacks on any one of the nato member it would be considered as an attack on all right and they all the nato countries would come together would stand together in the mutual defense of that country right so that is basically the objective of nato right a military alliance now in response to the nato russia also i mean uh, the sorry my bad soviet also formed the ussr also formed a military alliance a military pact called as warsaw pact guys warsaw is a capital of poland and uh, poland was a a a soviet one of the soviet satellite country uh, right it is it was a past of it was a, it was a part of the erstwhile soviet so warsaw pact was signed in the year 1955 as a counter to nato which was which came into being in the year 1949 so i hope we are clear clear with nato and the warsaw pact right so 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 in this way they started an ideological battle and both the blocks the soviet and the american bloc was you know developing uh, military wise in terms of technology in terms of space they were sending their uh, you know uh, the people into the space in order to prove their mettle over the other i hope you are getting my point now as i said that nato came in the year 1949 and it is headquartered at brussels belgium right today guys there are 30 member states in nato there are 28 european countries 
and two North American American countries. One is United States of America, USA, and the other is Canada. Right. So there are two North American countries and twenty eight European countries. The latest uh, country to join or to uh, become a member of NATO is North Macedonia, and uh, as you can see. right and it became the member in the year 2020 right so in this way guys uh, it is was a military alliance and uh, today it has 30 states right now however uh, with the fall of berlin wall in the year 1989 uh, the warsaw pact also came uh, also got dissolved right also came to an end right why because germany was bifurcated into two the eastern part of germany was under russian was under uh, the soviet control the eastern part of the germany east germany was under the soviet control and the west germany was under the control of united states of america and the wall that separated the east and the uh, the east and the west germany was called as berlin wall however and it actually you know uh, demarcated the boundary between the east germany or the soviet germany and the west germany or the capitalist germany right now the berlin wall fell in the year 1989 i mean that means symbolically it was being uh, destroyed and this uh, resulted into the uh i mean uh, and later it resulted into the disintegration of the soviet right so in 1989 it got uh, uh destructed and and then in 1990 the warsaw pact also got dissolved and just after the dissolution of the warsaw pact uh, the soviet the U ussr was disintegrated and all its uh, 14 soviet states or the satellite states were being carved out from the soviet and it resulted into the formation of russia right i hope it is clear so guys there is huge possibility of the questions being asked on these lines guys this is the state in the year 1960 when the cold war was at its peak so in in light green you can see the nato or the capitalist nations right even you can see here germany and this is how they divided germany east germany and the west germany so east was uh, the the communist bloc or the russian the soviet bloc and the west was the capitalist bloc right and this was your berlin wall right so france italy belgium and you have brussels here the capital of belgium and it is the headquarter of nato correct similar netherlands Uh, Italy, uh, Portugal, right, so on and so forth. Even Greece and Turkey, right. And in the year 1960, this block was called as Communist Block, right. And this was called as Soviet Union (USSR), the Soviet Union, correct. And it included those countries which are today the member of NATO. This is and this is the reason why this is what Russia do not want or Putin do not want. Poland, which was the part of the erstwhile Soviet, is now a NATO uh, nation, right? So similarly, Czechoslovakia, Hungary, Romania, Bulgaria, Albania, right? So they all were the uh, members of the communist bloc and also called as the Soviet, right? However, Albania withdrew very soon in the year 1968, right? So Albania uh, withdrew from the uh, Warsaw Pact in the year 1968. and later it became the member of nato right so today albania is a nato member right whereas the light pink color that you see is non aligned countries which are neither aligned which are not which, which are not aligned on either of the blocks like yugoslavia of which uh, marshal tito was the uh, premier similarly austria switzerland right spain they all were <laughs> nam countries right so i hope uh, we are clear with this beautiful uh, depiction of the warsaw pact countries and the nato countries right so warsaw pact as i said 
came in the year 1955 and NATO came in the year 1949. Right. I hope we are clear with this. Moving ahead, guys. Now you can see the Warsaw Pact, as I said, came into being in the year 1955 and it included the Soviet Union. As you can see, the Soviet Union, the Poland, East Germany, Czechoslovakia, Hungary, Romania, Bulgaria, Albania, right. The pact was signed in Warsaw, which is the capital of Poland in the year 1955. And it is also officially it was called as or formerly it was called as the Treaty of Friendship cooperation and mutual assistance right so it was a military pact correct as i said that albania withdrew very soon in the year 1968 and here the question may be asked and so in this way the warsaw pact embodied what was referred to as eastern bloc and the western bloc so eastern bloc was the eastern european countries which followed or which were influenced by the communist principles or the they are the part of the Warsaw Pact, whereas Western European nations were the part of the NATO, correct. Now the world, I mean the Cold War resulted into the arms race and that lasted throughout the Cold War, right. The Warsaw Pact was declared as an, an end in the year on 1991, 25th February, my bad, so it was 1991 and the Czechoslovakia president formally declared an end to the Warsaw Pact on 1st July 1991, right. And for, after a few months in December 1991, Warsaw Pact, I mean, uh, the complete Soviet Union was disintegrated and was dissolved. So all the uh, the satellite countries that you see today were being crafted out from the Soviet Union. And this, what you see Soviet Union became, uh, you know, Russian Federation, the Russian Federation. And they were being crafted out from uh, the Soviet and they became independent nations, right? And most of them later joined NATO, right? So I hope you are getting my point now. So if you now, if you we have understood this, we can get understand the roots of this conflict, right? Now, guys, uh, the self-declared mission of NATO, North Atlantic Treaty Organization, was to deter the soviet expansion was to forbid the revival of nationalist militarism in europe and to encourage european political integration right but definitely there was a strong emphasis on collective or mutual defense as we have discussed so it is a it is a it was a military cooperation i am sure guys there would be there is a strong possibility probability of the questions being asked on nato and the warsaw pact right so guys the Soviet Union in the year 1955 signed up socialist republics of Central and Eastern Europe, right? So the Eastern and the uh, Central European countries were, uh, they became the part of the Soviet, uh, right? And they signed socialist republic of the Central and the Eastern Europe to the Warsaw Pact, including Albania. However, Albania withdrew in the year 1968. It included Bulgaria, Albania, Czechoslovakia, East Germany, Hungary, Poland and Romania, right? So this is, these are some details. So guys, NATO is expanding, right? So today it has 30 members, right? It has, it is expanding as you can see. In 2020, North Macedonia joined. Prior to that in 2017, Montenegro joined. In 2009, Albania, Croatia joined, so on and so forth, right? So here you can see how Bulgaria, Latvia, Romania, Slovakia, they all joined even Greece, Turkey, Spain and very important Poland. Poland also joined guys and which Russia objected. Poland also joined uh, because Warsaw was the capital of is the capital of uh, Poland and it is it is in Warsaw Poland where, where the Warsaw Pact was being signed but sadly in 1999 Poland also joined uh, the NATO including the Czech Republic and the Hungary right. Now, these are the latest joinees, North Macedonia in the year 2020, Montenegro in the year 2017, Albania and Croatia. So Albania, which left uh, the Warsaw Pact in the year 1968, later joined uh, uh, the NATO in the year 2009, right? So in this sense, guys, NATO is expanding and that is something which 
which Russia do not want, right? Because uh, many of you wouldn't be uh, knowing that there was a there was an act of mutual cooperation between NATO and Russia, right? NATO promised Russia after the disintegration of the Soviet in the year 1991. So a pact was came into being in, in, in the year 1997, and NATO promised Russia that it would not expand itself. It would stop its expansionist policies, and the pact was called as Founding Act on Mutual Relations, Cooperation and Security. 1997 i repeat it was founding act on mutual Co relations and cooperation and security 1997 there is also a partnership for peace program also russia nato council which worked for the cooperation it started in the year 2002 till 2014 right so russia is saying that nato has failed its promise it has expanded itself and today it has included 30 nations right and and there were talks apparently that Zelensky, who is the president of Ukraine, has shown his interest in joining NATO, right? And NATO wanted to include Ukraine uh, uh, as a member of NATO, right? So when 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 you know uh, when NATO would reach uh, Ukraine, the Mos Moscow they would be able to you know install the missiles right in the border or on the border of Russia, and Moscow would be just within five minutes reach. So therefore, guys. Russia would never want Ukraine to become the member of NATO, number one. Number two, Ukraine is also, uh, as you would be knowing that, Ukraine is also the second largest European nation after Russia and it is also very heavily populated. So Russia would never want to lose Ukraine. So guys, this is how the NATO has expanded. So dark blue is 1949. So in 1949, only these countries were there. 52 till 1982, light blue right 99 these countries also were included and till current uh, 2017 till 20 these are the countries which are being included in nato and ukraine switzerland they all now are the current aspira aspirations to join right they are the aspirants to join the nato forces right so russia do not want nato right at its nose right so therefore it is objecting and it is it has invaded uh, Ukraine on 24th of February 2022 right guys in the year 2008 there was a conference of NATO in Bucharest a European nation and <clears throat> the NATO allies welcomed Ukraine's and Georgia's Euro-Atlantic aspirations for membership means they welcomed the Ukraine's ambitions and aspirations to join NATO and this actually set the alarm bells in Russia and and clearly Mr. Putin has said that no Russian leader could stand idly by the face of steps towards NATO membership for Ukraine, right? And Russia considered it as a political betrayal and it and that's the reason why it has, you know, scaled up its uh, shelling, its bombing in while well, it is invading Ukraine and possibly it has surrounded Kyiv and in a day or two, it may occupy Kyiv also, right? All right, I hope you got my point. So, guys, next news is Putin warns against imposing any no-fly zone over Ukraine. Now, guys, no-fly zone, NFZ is an international terminology. No-fly zone means if any country, you know, imposes no-fly zone or NFZ over its territory, then no no craft aircraft can you know fly over its territory correct and generally it is being used in uh, during the times of war if any aircraft of the foreign country is being found flying over the airspace of the country then it may get a reason to sh shoot it uh, out right so therefore no fly zone bars the aircrafts you know from flying in uh, especially for the security reasons and it stop an aggressor flying military aircraft over its own land right so there are talks guys that ukraine may uh, impose uh, the no flying zone and in this sense in uh, and in this situation if the russian aircraft enters into the ukrainian airspace then ukraine would get enough reason to shoot it down and even if the nato forces come supporting ukraine uh, right uh, they may shoot uh, the russian aircraft if the no fly zone is being imposed However, it may, you know, result into the war getting open and it may 
escalate the situations and it may result into the third world war which we do not want so a no fly zone over ukraine would mean that nato forces would engage directly with any russian planes right so guys so it would involve the british fighter jets shooting down russian fighters probably over ukraine that would lead to article 5 triggering of nato right so in this sense article 5 of nato would be invoked right so the no fly zones were being used earlier also in the first gulf war in the year 1991 uh, in 1992 during the balkan conflict then again in 2011 uh, a no fly zone was being declared in libya and bosnia right. so guys this is how russia is you know uh, expanding its uh, wings in ukraine and these are the regions which it has claimed as you know that belarus is a ally of uh, of 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 russia and uh, they have already you know entered from belarus they were entering from Donbas region, which they have declared independent, and Crimea they have already annexed in the year 2014, right? So Kher Kherson is occupied as they claim. Kharkiv, the second largest city of Ukraine, is being occupied. Sumy is also being occupied, and here these are the two cities where Indian nationals were also stuck. But however, under Operation Ganga, India is being able to evacuate around 20,000 uh, Indian nationals from Ukraine, right? They have occupied Chernobyl, which is a nuclear power plant. Here also, there is a nuclear power plant called as Zephorezia. Zephorezia nuclear power plant. And they have done the bombing of the same. Same. One out of six nuclear reactor is burning in Zephorezia. And if the shelling continues, it may result into a nuclear disaster, which may be worse than 1986 Chernobyl nuclear disaster. Right. So here they are, they are 65 kilometer convoy is awaiting the order of putin and they uh, they may in a day or two occupy kiev also right so mariupol Melitopol, they all are being occupied by the russian forces right so i hope we are you're getting my point now guys uh, coming to some indian news article locally made trainer aircraft right so a trainer aircraft is one which is being used for the uh, for the pilots in their uh, you know in their trials and generally uh, when they get license of flying they generally uses the such trainer aircrafts so so an indigenously built trainer aircraft has finished the sea trials right so it has finished the sea trials as you can see in CSIR facility in Bangalore on 31st March 2021, it was being rolled out, right? And the name of the aircraft trainer is Hansa New Generation or Hansa NG, right? Very important and expect a question on this. Hansa NG or New Generation is a trainer aircraft and it is being developed by CSIR, right? Uh, and NAL, right? So, it is an ideal aircraft for commercial pilot licensing due to its low cost and low fuel consumption. So here you can see Hansa NG, Hansa Next Generation, right. Guys, there was also news with regard to migratory birds. We all know that with the weather change, the, Sibi the, the, the Siberian region, you know, experiences extreme winters, freezing winters and it results into the migratory birds leaving their parent lands and and traveling thousands of kilometer to the tropical waters they come to india and many other uh, you know southeast asian nations right and this zone of their flying is called as caf or central asian flyway i repeat this zone of their flying or their transiting is called as caf or central asian flyway right and they have visited a wetland in Punjab called as Harike Baraj or Harike Wetland. It is a Ramsar site. And as you can see here, uh, but guys, there is an, definitely an overlap between CAF and the area of the agreement on the conservation of African Eurasian migratory water birds. So there is also a flyway of the migratory birds 
Asian Eurasian Migratory Water Birds (AIWA, AEWA), right? So it's been seen that there is an overlap between the pathway of CAF and AEWA, right? It's been said that 16 out of the 30 countries encompassed by CAF are located in AEWA, right? That means almost half of the 30 countries of uh, uh, CAF are located in AEWA or African Eurasian Migratory Water Birds pathway, right? Guys, uh, they have come to a Harike Lag Lake, which is a wetland, right? Wetland are those regions where you will find marshy land and almost seven or eight months in a year, you have a wet area, uh, you know, um, uh, the water structure. Plus, it would also, it also sees the migratory birds. They come here for breeding, right, in the breeding season, right? So, one such wetland and this is, mind you, Ramsar site. Ramsar is a place in, in Italy and uh, uh, the, it came into being there in 1990. It is a wetland. It is for wetland for of international stature, right? So Harike Baraj in Punjab, right? Guys, we all know that uh, Bias and Satlach are the Himalayan rivers and they are the tributaries of Indus, correct? So Bias and Satlach con confluence or they meet at in near Firozpur in Punjab called as at a place called as Harike, right? And a dam is being built here, and this has resulted into a uh, so, you know, the neighboring area or the surrounding area being submerged, creating a wetland, right? So, a Harike Baraj is also being built there, a dam or Harike Baraj is also being built over Bias River and Satlus River's confluence, right? And this is, there is a bird sanctuary also here, uh, right? Guys, and a very important fact, from Harike Baraj, you know, you can see guys, there is a Gagga River, they say that this river is a inland uh, drainage channel of the Vedic Saraswati river. Ho however, in the summer seasons, it generally, you know, dissipates its water. But during the rainy season, it overflows, creating flash floods in the regions of Hanumangar, uh, uh, Ganganagar, Sri Ganganagar, etc. Right. So, over Harike Baraj, a dam is being built and a canal is being constructed it carries the water in the state of Rajasthan, right? And this canal is, can you tell me? This is Indira Gandhi Nehar Project, IGNP, Indira Gandhi Nehar Project. Around 800 kilometers, 700 or 800 kilometers long canal, which actually, you know, uh, lets the Himalayan water into it, right? And it helps uh, suffice the the drinking, it, it, it provides the drinking waters, this, uh, uh, the sanitation facility for the, uh, the western region or water scarce region of Rajasthan, Indira Gandhi Nehar project at from originating from Harike Baraj. I hope it is clear, a very important fact. Guys, moving to the next article, endangered turtles play fast and loose with borders. Guys, a critically endangered turtle called as Northern River Terrapin, very important. It is also called as Batagur Baska, right? I repeat, a critically endangered, critically endangered turtle species, Northern River Terrapin, also called as Batagur Baska, has traveled, you know, hundreds of kilometers and now they have reached the coast of Bangladesh, right? It is, guys, one of Asia's largest freshwater and brackish turtles, right? So, here you can see, guys, the uh, the turtle, right? The Batagur Baska or the Northern River Terrapin. So, this is how it looks. So, it is a critically endangered uh, turtle and it has traveled, it travels hundreds of kilometers and has, it has reached the coast of Bangladesh. Very important. Plus, it is also under Schedule 1 of the Wildlife Protection Act or WLPA 1972 Schedule 1, right? It is protected under Schedule 1 of WLPA. Plus, it is included in Appendix 1 of CITES. CITES is Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species. Means, the species who are, which are included in CITES, you know, no trade, you know, uh, the, uh, the flash trade would be done if they are being included in sites, right? I hope you are getting my point. 
so if any species being included in, included in sites right then there would be no trade no trade can be done for that species in that species right so appendix 1 sites schedule 1 wlpa it is a critical endangered as per iucn and it is world's second most endangered turtle right the the the, the most endangered turtle is yangtze giant soft shell turtle being the most endangered freshwater turtle turtle right next article guys one gujjars a tribal community you may also call them semi nomadic community especially they are being found in uh, himachal pradesh uttarakhand uh, uttar pradesh right they perceive the how they perceive the wlpa wildlife protection act right although guys wlpa as a act came into being in the year 1976 in order to conserve and protect the wildlife but in the last year 2021 an amendment bill came into being called as wildlife protection amendment bill 2021 and it talked about uh, you know uh, some it actually talked about some changes now wpa 1976 is being heavily criticized why because it severely curtails the ability of the tribal communities to graze across the part pastoral spaces right and uh, generally uh, whenever they go to collect the um, uh, the timber the firewood etc they are being called as smugglers and or the poachers right so therefore they have lost their livelihood and uh, you know there is application of penal provisions under the wlpa on forest dwellers right without actual proof of them being involved in poaching etc right so it is therefore discriminatory and uh, you know the poor tribals like one gujjars are being declared are being you know uh, they see the penal provisions on them right right this is guys this is a brief history of wildlife protection act definitely it came in the year 1887 first then in uh, the second law came in the year 1912 then in 1916 after 60 after independence and what we see today is wlpa wildlife protection act of 1972 where the forest as a subject was being transferred from state list to concurrent list guys we all know that india is a federal country and the uh, legislative executive financial administrative powers are vertically divided between center and the state right in schedule 7 of the constitution you have three list list 1 2 and 3 list 1 talk about those subjects over which the parliament can make laws it is called as union list list 2 those subjects where the state government can make laws called as state list and list 3 is called as concurrent list where both the state and the the parliament can make laws but the execution of those laws would be taken care by the state government number 1 number 2 in times of conflict between the state and the a uh, union the law of the parliament shall prevail right so in this sense uh, in the year 1972 forest as a subject was being shifted from states state list to the concurrent list right by the passage of wildlife protection act 1972 i hope it is clear and it is very very important right so the objectives are to prohibit hunting uh, protection and management of wildlife habitats so on and so forth guys in director principles of state policy as you all know which give which are which put the moral obligation on the state they are non justiciable there is one article under part 4 of the constitution which is director principles article 48a right it talks about it directs the state to protect and improve the environment and safeguard the wildlife and forest i repeat again and it's very important the director principle of state policy dpsp article 48a you know uh, directs the state to protect the wildlife the forests and improve the environment right very very important so under this moral obligation the state the parliament of india came with the act called as wildlife protection act of 1972 i hope it is clear now guys uh, they are amending wpa and they have already amended it it has the new wpa act of 2021 has mandated the need to consult the gram sabhas you all would be knowing guys uh, gram sabhas are the are the legislative bodies of gram panchayat so at the grassroots level you have gram panchayat in villages right 
and the legislative body for gram panchayat is called as gram sabha so all the registered voters of the village are the members of gram sabha so as you have vidhan sabha for the center parliament for uh, sorry vidhan sabha for the state parliament for the center similarly you have gram sabha at the village level and it is also a legislature that is what is the function of legislature to legislate or to make laws so gram sabha makes laws right and it includes all the registered voters of the village right now the wpa amendment act 2021 mandates the need to consult the gram sabha in protected areas falling under the scheduled areas or areas recognized to possess forest rights based on claims under the forest right act 9, 2006 right so that means the consultation with gram sabha has become very very important right at the same time it has also taken a progressive step to foster the participation of forest dwellers something they have taken from a concept called as joint forest management right that means you can manage the forest only with the coordination and cooperation of the local tribes dwelling in the forest or the forest dwellers so so joint forest management participation of forest dwellers within national parks while determining the management plan i hope we are clear guys the next news article it has been making the news for past few days cbi central bureau of investigation has arrested the ex nse chief md ceo chitra ramakrishnan you all know about the co location case right the co location case right and uh, a bit of information about national stock exchange it is the largest derivative exchange guys the secondary market in the world in terms of contracts traded and the second largest derivative exchange in the world in terms of currency futures traded right and it was the first exchange in india to fully to start fully automated electronic trading right and chitra ramakrishnan was managing director and ceo of national stock exchange from 2013 till 2016 guys we have already discussed the co location facility now it is it is uh, something where you know the uh, in the nsc servers the brokers place their servers in uh, in the uh, in this in this in the main server body right and this is called as co location and in this way they get the they get the real time access of the data right and in and resultantly you know making huge gains right so guys co location facility also started in the year 2009 uh, and it it benefits the traders by having by giving them faster access to price feed and this is something called as tick by tick tick by tick or t by tbt data uh, right and uh, it disseminates information about the orders and trades in a real time basis and it works on tcp ip protocol right now guys uh, a whistle blower filed a complaint and and sebi you know took the action and it was being found that some traders got preferential access to the nse's co location facility aisa nahi hai ki there are uh, dusre countries ke andar co location facility nahi hai dusre uh, you know security markets mein they also do have but they are being regulated by the government right there are some set sops right standard operating procedures under which they are being uh, you know monitored but in india they were unregulated uh, for many years and this resulted into huge uh, mishap actually and it was being alleged that some nsc employees were colluding with these traders and some traders had multiple internet protocol or ip addresses in disseminating servers and secondary servers for accessing the data re- resulting in market manipulation right and one such broker who allegedly gained uh, through such uh, co location facility is opg securities right now so the cbi actually uh, have raided the properties of ramakrishna and narayan and uh, you all know about the uh, unknown himalayan yogi on whose advice chitra ramakrishnan was working and she also appointed narayan at 1 crore uh, payment um, and she was allegedly leaking the information of nse to this mysterious himalayan yogi right 
so in this sense guys neither employ it and any policy to map the ip address right so so this is how uh, the extent of loss was there and the sebi has ordered the amount of 15 crore rupees with interest of 12 percent right however is it would it impact the retail investors and traders no because they do not participate on co-location facilities and hence are not impacted right however it has proved the governance and system lapses i hope we are clear with the same now starting with the important editorials of the hindu so on the sixth page on the hindu we had this editorial about uh, you know um, <clears throat> about nord stream 2 gas pipeline and how america is actually threatening uh, to cut the nord stream 2 gas pipeline guys russia is one of the biggest exporters of natural gas and many european countries are dependent on this resource russia has started the nord stream 2 gas pipeline it is already under the process and it would connect the russian uh, gas field natural gas field to germany so germany is its major client now america is threatening after the russian invasion of ukraine that it would cut the nord stream 2 gas pipeline in this manner russia would lose a very big market in europe at the same time europe which is dependent on russia for its natural gas would also you know uh, its economy would also be destabilized so this article talks about i mean in term it says that how the gas competition or the resource competition is also one of the reasons behind uh, the russian war in ukraine guys the nord stream 2 pipeline has been declared by america as dead at the bottom of the sea it is europe is world's second largest market for natural gas and hence the battleground between superpowers that means between the america russia right so as we know that europe is the world's second i mean world's second largest market for natural gas so therefore it has become a battleground for uh, america and the russian companies right and and as far as germany is concerned it is still one of the world's largest importer of oil gas so it is world's largest importer of oil gas however uh, natural gas is not a clean uh, energy resource but it's being said that till at least 2040 uh, it would be the primary energy source right now the energy order in which oil was sold to west europe from west asian middle fields controlled by us companies right and the east europe from giant oil fields so eastern europe was majorly controlled by the uh, i mean eastern europe europe uh, demands for oil and gas were being sufficed by the soviet union whereas <coughs> whereas west was being dependent on america right so there was druzba pipeline network here this is an important fact drusba pipeline network in 1960s it went beyond integrating east europe right now us was losing its market and us fought to preserve market dominance by pressurizing nato partners into an embargo on pipe sales right now there are giant soviet gas fields connecting the western european markets via pipelines through east europe right so this is there siberian pipeline now now putin has revived the russia by leveraging oil and gas production which provides 60 percent of the exports right the main customer of nord stream 2 gas pipeline is germany as i said and the new pipeline was built to germany via belarus and poland and russia now supplies 35 to 40 percent of the european union's gas needs right but the shale gas revolution has made america the world's largest producer of gas right and the major exporter of lng right but there is a growing europe middle east gas nexus using the enormous gas reserves of iran right recently german chancellor olaf scholz has also said that in case of an invasion of ukraine there will be no longer uh, nord stream 2 
and we will bring an end to it right joe biden has clearly said it right and mr scholz who is the german chancellor has announced a u turn from ostpolitik to closer coordination with nato so guys in this sense nord stream 2 is a well chosen target as the recently completed 10 billion uh, pond asset is wholly owned by russia's gas prom unlike nord stream 1 which is jointly owned with european companies so very important facts nor where nord stream 2 is completely owned by russian company gazprom nord stream 1 gas pipeline was jointly owned by russia and the european companies right so in this sense the nord stream project has larger capacity than all of russia's current and planned gas pipelines to china so it remains of great impor- importance for moscow right so <coughs> so this is all about this article and uh, uh, you can see here right so this is about the explanation of the article you can see how nord stream 2 gas pipeline connects the Gre- greazovitas viborg or volkhov uh, natural gas field or viborg na- natural gas field it goes through the baltic sea right so this is very important they may ask you that which ocean through which sea actually uh, the nord stream 2 gas pipeline transits so it is baltic sea right so here you can see so volkhov and viborg uh, natural gas fields are being connected to germany which is the most important major client of the nord stream 2 gas pipeline right so it it transits through the baltic sea and goes to the north of poland to germany right and it it has its nodes to germany and many other european countries right so america is threatening that it may cut the nord stream to gas pipeline i hope it is clear right so this is how the article looks like and you can read this article it is important one right so guys i hope you enjoyed the session that's all for today thanks for uh, staying here and bearing me stay tuned press the like button do share comment and forward the videos thanks for your feedback all the best wish you all the best god bless you good day goodbye